Awesome. You're amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All blessings and honor and glory and power unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am back. Um, we are getting to be, it's close to seven-ish, but it has gotten dark early today. Look, you guys, it's just, it may not look that dark, but it is getting dark. So I don't know if we've got storms possibly getting ready to brew here in Missouri or not, but, uh, so the Holy Spirit took over just a little while ago, and so this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to read some of these two verses to you, and real quickly, just a quick prayer in. Um, Father God, I thank you so much uh, for this day, for this revelation that um, you've given me to share, which everybody has read before, of course, in the Bible, if they've read the Bible. But in the unique way that you had me do this today... It's no wonder because you know what? You know me inside and out. And he's the one who made me this way because ever since I was uh, little, since I can remember, I always like to read things from the end to the beginning. And I even like write that way. So I'll show you in just a second. But earlier, uh, he just took over and he asked me to go to read, uh, to write child every single verse chapter 3 verse 3 um and through the new testament to begin with and then the old and so i started to do this and um he told me which ones to go to in the old testament as well and he just said rena child i want you to go through my scriptures to every three verse three in new testament and isaiah malachi zechariah Ezra, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, 1st and 2nd Kings. And so um, this is what I'm going to do. This is, I, and he told me to read from the back to the front. So to start in Revelation. And I want you to just listen. First, okay, Revelation 3, 3. Remember therefore how, that house, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Okay, John 3, 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Okay, Peter 3, 3. This is Second Peter, remember, going backwards. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. And First Peter 3.3, 3, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning, plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. Second Timothy 3.3, 3, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusators, uh, incontent, fierce despisers of those that are good. Second Thessalonians 3, 3. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. <laughs> and I had to go on a little. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you, that ye both do and will do the things which we commanded you. And I'm sorry because actually the Holy Spirit told me to do 3-4 on that one. It wasn't me, but it was. It was me physically doing it. But the Holy Spirit told me to. And then 3-5. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the uh, patient waiting for Christ. Okay, First Colossians 3-3. Three, three. For ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Where is our life? I'm sorry, who is our life? So, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Who is our life? Okay. When Christ shall appear, then, ye, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. 
Philippians 3.3, 3, For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Ephesians 3.3, 3, How that by revelation he made known unto me. Now this is talking about Paul, not me. <laughs> um, so how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Well, guess what? Whereby when ye read... Ye may also understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2.2, 2, he told me to go there. And you, he hath quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Yes, and I rebuke him and Jesus Christ. I rebuke all his little minions and his hierarchy. His minions and hierarchy. Uh, pff, back to the dry places. And guess where the dry places are, guys? Beer. That's what it says. That's what it says when you look it up in the Strong's Concordance. It absolutely blows my mind. But uh, where was the other one little thing? And so that's as far as I got. But, oh, I wanted to tell you about these quick rapture dreams, okay? So I've had, like, three, it's going on three dreams now. It may only be two, but it feels like because there were so many, in, in, it was, like, so many instances that it's, like, one night I dreamt about it more than once. Do you know what I mean? Something like that. So it feels that way anyway. So, okay, I'm going to just get to the point because... Okay, this dream that I had, and I've had it over, like, however many times now, we're all getting onto these slides. It's like water slides at a park, and it is so crazy because we're not at a water park, but we get into the, get, it's like a water slide, like how you'd walk right up at the water park, but there's no water park, though, and I see all these people, like, one time, it was people from my church, I kid you not, and everybody got into their own individual slide, and there was water in there and everything, and we just got in and whooshed out, and that is so wild, because I've had, like, three of them, and when I was back in 1989, I believe, it was the same year, Henry Grover, I was 21 years old, I'll never forget that. And I had this dream the same year that Henry Grover had his dream about Russia as well. And I dreamt that Russia, I'm 54 now, but I dreamt when I was 21 that Russia, I was in the high rise and it was in Madison, Wisconsin in this high rise and that these nukes came. I watched them right out the window and um, I floated up to the ceiling, you guys, and I wasn't saved yet. And then I floated back down. It was so weird. I was like, what happened? But yes, a nuke had gone off in Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, I remember I went outside. I got outside and there was just garbage, everything burning everywhere. It was just completely like, I mean, you can't even imagine. And I saw a man walking and then a woman that looked like a witch and she ran up to him and lit his hair on fire and his hair was just poof up. And then I ran and got away and I was climbing over a big, huge mountain of garbage and just, just stuff, metal. And I will never forget that dream. And then uh, whenever I, I don't know how I found this door though. And I found the door, opened the door, and I went inside, and it was the same thing. It was like a slide, but it wasn't water. The, that, that was water. Maybe it was because I hadn't received the Holy Spirit yet. I was so, I mean, I was only 21. I was never baptized by the, at that time. So this time, though, those water slides recently, those dreams represent the Holy Spirit, I believe, the water, and the life of Jesus Christ. And it's totally like you take off and we would take off in these long slide rides. And it was long. It was incredible. It was so fun. I remember the feeling in my tummy. Uh, so, but that dream that when I got on the slide at the end of the nuclear war dream, and it was just a regular slide, when I got to the other end, I actually was allowed to see and there were all these people dressed in white garments, beautiful white garments. And 
from head to toe. And um, there was a black man at the piano. And everybody was singing to Jesus. Everybody was singing to Jesus. It was the most amazing. I woke up and I knew. I mean, I have known since when I was in the fourth grade. And he gave me this dream. And I will tell it one more time just because it's so beautiful. And it was after my mother tried to commit suicide. And I found her in the middle of the night. She had taken a whole bottle of sleeping pills. And um, it was over a man. And she said some pretty harsh things to me that night because I did slap her and stuff and woke her up. But she still had to be rushed to the hospital and have her stomach pumped. So, but besides that, the main thing about this is that I felt completely betrayed. There was no talk afterward really about it. Um, I really was just desperate. I was crying a lot. I thought my mother didn't care about me or want me. Um... And it was really rough. I didn't have a dad, you guys. So that's another thing. I grew up without a dad. And so just to be honest with you, I'm being as honest as possible. And I'm trying to like just, you know, brighten up a little bit in here because I don't want to get all down or anything about that. But so I had this dream uh, about a year later when I was living with my grandmother and it was incredible. I was standing there and it wasn't even above my ankle, the water. And I looked up. I was it was like an auditorium. It was just dark and silent and dark and then I but there were stars like so close I could almost reach them you know it was like you reach up and it was kind of like that movie with uh, Jodie Foster and Michael McConaughey where she takes off they do this machine thing and she takes off and it's some bull crap stuff story but anyway it's not that bad of a story actually compared to the stuff they have out now these days but um what was I even talking about, you guys? That dream. And you know what? I'll forget. Just give me a second. Holy Spirit, help me. What was I talking about? And uh, I don't want to forget and seem like a complete idiot, but because I feel like the Holy Spirit left. Are you here, Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Praise God. I think that the sun completely went down. And you know what I think happens? I think that the sun... That the Lord uses that as it talks about it throughout the entire Bible that the Lord uses the sun he sure does and uh, it doesn't matter wherever the sun is shining he can use it um, to shine on men it talks it throughout the book of the entire Bible all the different books and it talks about it as well on um, in the book of Enoch but anyways I'm getting so tired and I can barely see hold on Maybe this will help if I can see a little bit, just with a teeny little bit of light. There we go. And then I can finish telling you guys what I was going to tell you, okay? Because this is, wow, this is better. Now we can see. Hallelujah for that. Praise God. Okay, the wind has picked up as well, so I bet you anything that storms are a possibility. And I told you that. I thought that it looked like that, too. So the wind is really starting to pick up. How about you guys? Where are you at? If everybody could talk to me and tell me where you're at out there, I'd love that. But what was it? I don't want to forget something serious. Oh, the dream. I was telling you about the dream when I was reaching up for the stars, right? And a light just suddenly turned on and it shone down on a rock. And it was a lion on the rock. And then this on the other side of the auditorium, a light shone down on a rock. And there was a lamb on that rock. And then I just heard, like, a, over the loudspeaker, you are having a prophetic dream, child. And I was, like, woke up, and I was like, what in the world is prophetic? So I went and asked my grandmother, because that was the most intense dream. And I believe that, because my mom took me to see Jesus Christ Superstar, the rock opera. I used to listen to that over and over again. I love to sing it. And even though they promoted Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny, like they're not real, right? They're, or you're supposed to totally believe in them. But then you find out later that you've been lied to about all that stuff. It's like all set up to do that to you. Your parents are lying, lying to you when they tell you all this stuff, right? And then so are you really supposed to believe in Jesus? But I knew. I knew. 
I really did, especially after that dream. Because when my grandmother said she would not tell me what it meant, I needed to go to that Webster's Dictionary. She had a big old stand with an encyclopedia. And she told me I had to go look it up. And when I looked it up, I still didn't understand it. In the fourth grade, like, what was I, eight? I did not understand what prophetic meant, what prophecy meant, none of it. So I just remembered it and held on to it. And I do believe that that has something to do with what he was telling me early on that prophecy would be my gifting or whatever, my calling. So I am a server of the Most High. I serve him. Um, I'm a server at a Waffle House too. So it's okay. And we're all servers. And no, and he, like Jesus says um, about that, he is so humble and it's just it's really like I think about these things like he's just he lived as a human you guys as fully God can you imagine the feelings the way that he had to go through what he understands what we go through you guys I, I truly believe that and he overcame and he has given us a second chance take that chance take it and just look for him, and I promise you that he'll reveal himself to you in ways you never thought possible. So, I will give you 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That's the gospel. Jesus came. He died on a cross, bled, shed his blood, which is the most important thing. The blood is what saves you. And uh, that is the most amazing thing. A, admit you're a sinner in need of a savior. B, believe and confess. And the blood is what saved you. He shed that upon the, the cross, taking on every single sin that you would do throughout your entire lifetime, future, present, and past. So you have to remember, we're not all perfect. No, you can't be perfect. That's based, They when they do that to you, when they try to tell you, oh, if you take a puff on a cigarette or you smoke or you this or you that, okay, I'm not saying I'm behind that. And I have issues in my own departments, believe me, okay, God knows this. You, don't, you need to understand that these people at the churches that try to tell you, you can't this, you can't that, you can't this, you can't that. That is uh, not what Jesus taught. That's, not, that's their own doctrine. I mean, yes, it is good to sanctify and everything, but what it mainly talks about is mastering sin. And the opposition, once you are flipped... Like I showed you, like I've been teaching you guys, the left eye the left eye is the eye that goes down, the right eye goes up, okay? And once you turn them both up, they come together, smack, just come together, and that wall of partition is abolished. That's in between your host body. And on the right side, that's why, why do you think in the Bible it talks about the right side of everything being good? That's Jesus. Jesus came across the waters, the deep, along with you. When you came, he never left you. He's been here with you ever since. And you also have an umbilical cord. It's a silver, silver umbilical cord going all the way to the heavens. And that is the most amazing thing as well. Because he knows where you're at all the time. And I filmed it. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have heard of Parable of the Vineyard. But I actually went out to a festival thing that they had for two weeks, a couple months, like a month and a half ago. And so one of the singers for a band that was there playing, I filmed him and a rainbow shot down right on his face as I was filming him because we were interviewing each other. He had his, we we're doing this thing back and forth. His name is Lyndon, I think. And, um, but anyways, this huge silver cord came down from the sky. I got it on film and it's on top of his face and it's a huge rainbow it's beautiful. It's amazing. So I love you guys. That's all I wanted to tell you. I wanted to share the stuff because he told me to share the dreams about the uh, raptures and the slides because that was a representation of the rapture and we're getting close. He named this channel 1111 Raptured Saints, okay? And when he did that, he had me go read. He said, open the Bible. And he had me read 2 Kings chapter 2, which is Elijah's rapture. That was the first video I did, and it got 5,000 views. And then the next video was 17,000. And, you know, he's kept me on a leash. Not, not really, but yes, he has. And he does control everything. Believe me, you. He does. So, I 
believe this. I know that faith is something that you have to have and it comes without seeing. That's true faith. You cannot be seeing it to really have faith you must believe in it without seeing it. That's called true faith. And so I just remember all of that and I know that God uses this channel for what he will and his purpose and that is all I want is for his will to be done. So I wanna thank each and every single one of you for again spending time with me today on the second video and that I'm putting out. And also, if you would, please leave prayers and comments down at, at the bottom and hit the like button and um, get this out in the algorithms because we need to get everybody on the ark. The ark needs to get the train, the Jesus train is getting ready to leave. And I'm talking soon, you guys. The other bit of information I wanted to get to is United Nations released. There is an asteroid called the child that is in the womb of Virgo right now. Did you know that? And so the other asteroid is called Yeshua. Yahushua. And that is waiting at the feet of the child right now. Don't tell me that's not crazy. That's insane. That is so much. That is crazy. That is so cool. And it is almost time, guys. So we are almost out of here. Just hang on and do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. Because Jesus is coming. And you are part of his children, all of you out there. In this video, please, Lord, please send this video out far and wide to the four corners. We want souls to be saved, get saved. We do. And like I said, call upon his name. He's worthy to be praised. Yes, search him out. And then get a water, bapti a water baptism. Sorry, De Deliverance is demonstrated once you receive a water baptism and the fire and the spirit come down on you. Please believe in the blood of Jesus and get water baptized. Fully submerged all the way under. And I love you all in Christ and have an awesome rest of your weekend. I uh, just want to hope, I hope to hear from some of you back. I hope that this gets out. I really pray for all people to come to Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And it's just getting to me because I feel the urgency like so strong. Today, it has overwhelmed me. I'm getting... Um, so excited, like just crazy, crazy excited. I woke up with this insane migraine and I've had uh, a couple things going on with my ears and the pressure. And I'm telling you guys, there's something happening. There's like something happening here. And it's, I'm not sure what is happening. Okay, but stop, pay, pay attention now. Everybody look what's going down. So, sorry, I just had to do that. <laughs> I decided to do that today. We're not going skating tonight, so I have to, like, take my personality somewhere. But I'm so excited, and I know you guys are too, because our king is coming. Our king is coming. So get ready. And I love you guys. And please, please have a safe evening, whatever you do. And we'll talk soon. Good night.